Morning. It is Tuesday the 14th of November. Hope everyone is well. Um, pretty decent open actually, uh, comparative to, to recent weeks. We've seen a bit of market movement already, so uh, hopefully we can touch upon some of the reasons and a few key levels that have been in focus. Um, we can also have a quick look at the FTSE 100, which is higher this morning. Vodafone and Tesco leading the way, and obviously they are major components of that index. Um, also, looking at a few other things, you've got a, a real key ECB forum happening later today at 10 o'clock London time AM. We're looking for the Fantastic Four. So Yellen, uh, Kuroda, Draghi and Carney are all going to be speaking. Uh, so we'll have a look what to expect from that. Uh, and then also Theresa May is going to be giving a two-day hearing in British Parliament commencing from midday today where she's going to be talking specifically on Brexit which obviously is very much in focus given a lot of the weekend press that her leadership is under threat at the moment with a growing number of Conservative MPs looking to push her aside. So that's what we're going to have a look at through the, the briefing. So just having a look at the charts this morning there has been, as I said, a few decent moves. So let's get straight down to, to what's been happening. Uh, and Euro has seen a pretty decent move on the upside. Now, a combination of a couple of different things here. Uh, this was the level we were looking at this morning. Really, you've got to take in context the Euro as a bit of a journey of where it's been since late October, which of course was, if I just identify the area really here, is where we saw that really big sell-off in the Euro. Although the ECB said that they were going to trim their uh, QE program from the monthly purchase size of 60 to 30 billion, which is obviously uh, a tightening of policy, that they did accompany that with a particularly dovish slant in terms of the communication that followed. And that was one of the bigger down days that we've had in the euro for some time. The reason why today and this morning looks interesting is because the euro on the daily pivot levels is testing R2 at the moment. Now, technically, we've had a break of the uh, high that was seen both yesterday and that also matching up fairly closely to the Friday afternoon high we had to finish off last week. So technical breach of that level and actually it did have a catalyst this morning at around 7 a.m. Um, although the move did come after it certainly helps fit the story of a, of a stronger euro and that was because German economy steams ahead in a boost to euro era recovery. So quarter on quarter of the readings, the latest GDP from Germany, uh, total output increased 0.8% in the third quarter, above expectations of 0.6, growth especially driven by exports uh, and investment. So pretty impressive numbers there coming out from the main kind of contributor to economic growth in the Eurozone, that in combination with the technical breaks. And so we are testing up at a, at a fairly interesting level here in the Euro early this morning. Uh, just highlighted here the November 3rd high, which sits just a few pips above this R2 level. So pretty decent resistance level, but one would imagine then if we did manage to break here, there's probably a, a large number of stops sitting just the other side. <laughs> above here, technically the next line of, I guess, significance just coming further out of the chart, it would be a pullback up towards the original lows that were seen prior to that ECB dovish dip that we had. So this would be back to the 23rd of October time. Uh, so definitely worth keeping an eye on the euro currency as we go through the morning. And the that October or November 3rd high was printed at 17.22 and a half. So it's literally about three pips above the R2 on the intraday session. So to be watched going forward. Uh, elsewhere, gold as well has seen a, a pretty decent pop on the downside. Uh, there's nothing specific in terms of a headline that's um, pushed the price action. It actually looks more of a function of a, a technical breach and again some stops being run. We broke the Friday low uh, around 12.73 and a half. Uh, we snapped through the seventh low, which also corresponded with around S2. And you can see that sharp extension on the wick is kind of an expression of the fact that the market ran those stops, dipped down to briefly in the future sub-1270 before then springing back to that level. Uh, I have heard a couple of contacts suggestive of big, uh, kind of chunky order flow going through as well uh, that may have been a catalyst for the initial uh, breach with the break and then some stops being rung to help exacerbating that move. Uh, but otherwise, there's not nothing really too concrete from a more 
positive factor other than the, the data that we've had so far really coming out of Germany on the GDP front which obviously was was better than expected. Uh, how the other assets are looking well equities slightly positive you can see here the DAX uh, very interesting to see the the size of the bounce from yesterday I was actually off the desk most of yesterday afternoon uh, lecturing but what I can see is that we've kind of uh, gravitated back towards that range high that we were printing that was a key level that we were looking at yesterday uh, on a test and you can see when it breached that point of the October kind of consolidation area uh, it really shot lower and that 1300 was seen pretty quickly and this was kind of what we were discussing yesterday in the briefing and we've kind of gravitated back towards that level so some congestion now forming around that previous high uh, that was seen in mid-October um, where do we go from here well I think we've got to really wait for the well there's a couple of decent economic data points coming out from uh, this morning that definitely need monitoring to make a bit more of an informed decision and direction over the intraday period uh, from Europe you've got ZEW and from the UK you're going to look out for inflation data uh, and actually just having a quick look at cable I thought what was interesting yesterday uh, and again this was something we were we were talking about and I was talking to some of the new trainees about this was yesterday you had a pretty big repricing uh, at the immediate opening of electronic trade from Sunday night we had an initial selling pressure this of course came on those press articles that circulated emanating from the Sunday Times talking about now it's gone from basically 30 to 40 conservative MPs uh, that are putting pressure on Theresa May to step aside and obviously this is now eight short of enough to basically secure a vote of no confidence against the Prime Minister where she has to leave whether or not and this is one of the important factors here eight more members within the Tory party voting for Theresa May to basically resign it sounds small but actually in reality it's, it's quite a big gap because the closer you get to the margin the less or more reluctant than some of these politicians are to put their name into that camp given the fact that they will be the ones that will be pin responsible for her eventual demise so I would say it's, it's she's still there for the moment um, and what was interesting yesterday is that after Asia reacted to the initial news you then also had the UK and European interpretation so again as we always say the FX market starts early doors in terms of initial movement and response to what's occurred from the weekend's news we then breached obviously the the low that was seen towards the latter part of uh, the previous week and we ran down all the way to S what would have been the S2 on the day what was interesting here was that from the close on Friday to the low of yesterday I mean we're talking nearly a 150 pip move uh, and what I was talking about to some of the newer guys yesterday was about the fact that the markets now repriced for this new negative development from a fundamental perspective but overall not forgetting that today you're going to have UK inflation of which UK CPI headline reading year on year is expected to pick up to three spot one percent and so you know, we were looking at at that point what was the possibility of the pound continuing to run lower when market participants are fully aware that inflation is expected to pick up later today and so um, as we were were largely expecting we saw a pretty <coughs> decent recovery in the pound after that initial run down to S2 throughout the latter part of the afternoon and we're kind of in a holding pattern now around the daily pivot as markets wait for the inflationary reading the CPI RPI and so on which we're going to get at half past nine and we'll have a look at that in a second uh, of what to expect a uh, quick update then on some of the major headlines that have come out aside from the German data you've had some Chinese numbers in the overnight session uh, a cluster of kind of information Chinese industrial production came in 0.1 weaker than expected so net net not a great deal of interest in that figure retail sales likewise 0.1 miss but broadly in line at 10.3 percent fixed asset investment same case so overall not really much direction coming from or reaction in the Chinese markets to this data and in terms of the close on Wall Street it was marginally positive by about 0.1 percent so 
certainly from the negativity that had developed in the equity market pressure that we saw at the back end of last week has stabilized for the time being, at least. This is one of the other headlines that you've got to be aware of today. Uh, and this is to put it in context of what we're going to see later, because UK Prime Minister Theresa May's Brexit legislation, i.e. the EU withdrawal bill, is the subject of two days of line-by-line -line examination in the Commons, starting from midday today, and it continues throughout the afternoon and recommences tomorrow. So it's a two-day hearing, but you can imagine the type of pressure that she's going to be under, given the the lack of authority that she is currently imparting onto her own party, uh, the Conservative Party. So definitely needs to be watched. David Davis made a comment last night where he was questioned directly, what is the chance of a transitional deal being secured by December, which of course uh, matches up then with the EU summit taking place, I think it's the 14th and 15th of December. So time is kind of running short on that. And he said the chance is 50-50. I would say what he's suggesting is baloney. And I would say, actually, I think 50-50, good luck with that. I would say, yes, there's a possibility of that happening. But 50-50, I think, is a bit of a stretch of the imagination. I'd say, I would say so a transitional deal, if I was asked to put a number on it, I'd say is more kind of 2080 that they're going to get a deal done before the end of the year. I think it's more likely or not that they won't, and it's going to be more of a Q1 issue, which certainly from a political point of view uh, is going to increasingly add further weight to the sterling currency from a, from a negative point of view, given Article 50 timeline is being shortened all of the time. So Theresa May at midday, I think certainly for sterling traders, you're going to have to, to keep a close eye on. Okay, I want to talk about the calendar and get straight to it because there's a couple of things to add a bit more colour and context to this. So we've already had the German data. Uh, the, the, the CPI from Germany was the final reading, so there's not been much interest in that. But moving on, we do get the main kind of feature of the morning being UK inflation. And this, of course, because UK CPI has been tracking at multi-year highs and has been the key contributor to the reason for the Bank of England to hike interest rates. Uh, that we saw on the 2nd of November. So going back to the chart, let's have a look at UK inflation where it stands at the moment. You can see here at 3%, uh, it's the highest inflation rate since April of 2012. Uh, likewise, core inflation also tracking uh, multi-year high levels as well. Expectations today, and let's just back this chart out to look a little bit longer time frame. Let's go to 10 years. We're Median consensus is for 3.1%. 3.1% obviously triggers then Mark Carney is going to have to dust off his stationary set and issue a formal letter to the Chancellor Philip Hammond explaining for why he's breached the Bank of England's target, of course, which is 2%. So this is going to put us back up similar margin to where we were really to the beginning of 2012. Question marks will be... 3.1%, um, if you go on the calendar, the range for today's headline reading is 3 to 3.2%. So correspondingly with looking at the impact of the pound, certainly 3.2% would be, uh, would probably see a breach then, certainly a pivot on the upside. You might even see a retest then of the uh, high that we had from yesterday morning and afternoon, that double top of around 131.47 would likely be tested. That's only around 20 pips away from current prices uh, because markets would need to reprice that actually maybe inflation here is picking up more aggressively than people had thought. Um, do I think that this will alter too much the Bank of England's uh, path? Well, they've already said they are going to hike rates, but this time I think that really it's the Brexit uncertainty that's really clouding their judgment to be able to really uh, act more forcefully and with more clarity on guidance at this point. But upside levels here definitely could be tested from yesterday uh, if we do get at 3.2% print. It certainly yeah, might act as a bit of a springboard, an initial snap through that level as a classic to go back and push up to the gap from where we reopened on Sunday night, which is pretty much to the tick, the R1 level at 31.85 in the futures. Should it play out in that way, of course. Weak inflation, 
So let's say we get a 2.9%, uh, surprisingly weak, below the bottom end of the range, then certainly uh, S1. Likewise on the daily pivots, 130.74 was the low print from yesterday. And given the heightened negativity developing from a political standpoint, certainly there's plenty of scope for a run on the downside if that were to materialize. Uh, as we looked at on the daily charts, really it's that 150, 130.50 kind of cluster area which we really found a low post the Bank of England meeting, a break of so we just changed my screens a break of that level could really open up a decent move to the to the downside there so this is what i was just looking at here this level here on the upside i was just going back on my cable chart a breach of that you've got the upside level at r1 there with the gap opening that we had from sunday night so that's in light of a, of a strong cpi reading a weak one then you've got at 130.74 here in cable which was yesterday's low, with then looking for a key level, a test down and breach of that post UK dovish QIR minutes commentary, which is 130.53, which definitely opens up the potential for a run if breached down to the 130 handle psychologically, with not a lot below there uh, long term, till you start getting down to the 128 lower bound of the move that was seen um, at kind of late August. So that's the that's a key number coming out later, of course, as well. Keeping context, the the market wrapped to the headline and the core expected uh, to see a slight uptick as well, 2.8 to 2. Point, from 2.7. Moving further on, you've got German ZEW. Uh, so if you remember, this is one of the one of the more important kind of soft economic data measure points or measurements that come out of Germany. Um, unlike IFO, which is a measurement of company sentiment, this is a collection of 350 different um, kind of heads of economists and so on analysts who are asked about their forward-looking assessment of current and forward-looking six months economic conditions in the country. So certainly this does have some potential to uh, be of a bit of interest for the euro, particularly, particularly around these key levels on the upside that we're looking at at the moment, retesting up at the early November highs uh, and with the DAX usually being quite sensitive to this type of data. Um, looking at the the recent readings that we've had, the last German ZEW headline came in at 17.6. So this has been a fairly robust piece of data, despite the one-off dip that we printed back in um, August. It has recovered quite nicely, and in terms of the actual expectation is for further improvement to 20. So that would put us back up to level seen last back in May of this year. Overall, I'd say on the balance, German economic data has been more or better than worse at this point and that continues to be a kind of a continuation of the uh, economic performance across much of the eurozone at the moment okay a few other things for this afternoon you get the ppi numbers and this is kind of setting the scene then for the run into the one of the main events for the week which would be US CPI data tomorrow. So that PPI number from the US is coming out at 1.30. You're also looking out for the API inventories as per usual later on this evening. Now, this is one of the big things today that you need to be aware of. And this is being dubbed the Fantastic Four. So all four heads of the key major central banks. Now, a lot of people drawing obviously some comparison to the last time that these four all took the stage together at an ECB forum, was back in Centra, Portugal. It's probably going back about three months now or so. And this saw a very, very large repricing of global yields and consequently big moves in the, in the bond market. Bunds saw a, a pretty large move. And this was because at that point, it almost seemed like there was probably the exception being Japan, a coordinated move towards sounding more hawkish almost preparing then as a collective the fact that this era of low accommodative monetary policy is soon coming to an end. So things have moved on since then. And actually, as much as this 100% needs to be monitored, these uh, the, the section of the day where they're going to be speaking is from 10 o'clock a.m. London time. I would say I'm not expecting a great deal from them. So I would be monitoring it just in case. But I'd say as a baseline expectation, possibly it could be a bit of a dull affair. Now, the reasons for this, 
is because Yellen is soon to be replaced. We know that now. Jerome Powell is going to take her place in uh, February of next year. So what she has to say, the Fed are pretty much on a predefined course. They're going to hike in December. She's probably going to just do the status quo in terms of the sequence of hikes. They're already communicating for 2018. The market's now looking to Powell for direction, kind of the latter part of Q1. So Yellen, probably not going to say too much. For Draghi, I mean, we've just had a really big move, obviously, in the markets on the back of his, yes, winding down, if you like, the commencement of reducing the firepower of quantitative easing come 2018 from 60 to 30 billion but he's communicated that this is going to be an extremely slow arduous process going forward and interest rates in the in europe are going to stay low for a considerable period of time even after the end of qe and bond purchases so there's no need for him to really alter his language then you move on to the others corroda very much seen as unlikely to change course anytime soon. He continues to just march on with a, a very loose monetary policy and, and further QE. And then for Mark Carney, is probably the one we've heard from most recently. He, yes, hiked rates, but you remember the pound sold off aggressively on the minutes in QIR because in, an, in summary, very difficult for the Bank of England to forecast the future two-year horizon because of the lack of clarity about how this Brexit situation is going to play out in the interim period. And so, again, there's nothing really new for him to add. One thing, if there is a Q&A session, is when he is speaking, we would know the inflation reading. So maybe if inflation, the CPI comes out at half nine, is particularly high or low, let's say way out of line, then certainly it'd be interested to see if he comments on that and if that alters in any way his thoughts from what was issued at the beginning of the month. But I would say net-net, it's almost status quo across all three or all four major central banks. I'm not expect, expecting too much here. So that's pretty much it. One thing just to quickly round off for any stock watchers, uh, you did have Vodafone this morning, they released their numbers, and obviously they're one of the biggest market cap stocks of the FTSE 100. They raised their expectations for full-year profit and cash flow after it reported stronger than expected revenue growth in Europe in the first half of the fiscal year. One of the other things as well that I just wanted to mention with the UK just to wrap things up was this, because when it comes to inflation, this is one of the main things which is really hurting consumers. We've talked about before this pretty lackluster pickup in wages in comparison to the cost of goods going up, which is making the cost of living more expensive for the average UK citizen. So we've had Kantar, which basically there are uh, a statistics agency which gathers information and they look at specifically the supermarket sector. And they've reported this morning that British grocery inflation was 3.4% in the 12 weeks to November 5th. That's now the highest level since November 2013. So the market research is saying prices are rising fastest in markets such as butter, fish, cola, and are falling in only a few markets. So overall then, you know, the, just doing your regular grocery shop is getting increasingly more expensive at the moment, which is obviously uh, a difficult sign for households uh, given what we just said. The fact that wages are pretty stagnant at this point. So this is the rock and a hard place that we find ourselves in with the Bank of England. But definitely, I would say, trade the data later accordingly. So this was the Kantar numbers. Um, in respect to short term, the market's going to react to the inflation figure. But then overall, how sustainable that move will be, you know, the Bank of England have already communicated really their projected path. Look for Mark Carney for some guidance, possibly at 10. And then you've got Theresa May, which more likely or not uh, is going to come under some heavy pressure from her, her appears in Parliament later from 12 o'clock. All right, that's it. Um, just to finish off, I have seen the euro has been flickering having a little test on that high that we were just talking about. So definitely keep an eye on that, guys, as we go through the morning. <coughs> okay? Have a good one. Thank you very much.